All right, let's talk about how you would do an in-game tutorial in something. First of all, why is having an in-game tutorial useful to the end user experience? And why is it challenging for developers? Well, often when we play video games, there's enough rules about the game world, about how to interact, doing the input, that you have to tell the user about that explicitly. A tutorial is a device that in the first one minute, 10 minutes, one hour of gameplay, you give the user additional information. So as they walk up to a character, you explain how to hit a button to start the conversation. Whereas after five hours of that game, you wouldn't need to show them every time. So this is something that is temporary, often done at the beginning or the first time the user encounters something. So that's why we want to have it, right? Now, why is it challenging? Well, because it doesn't always happen, like typically when we create game features, they're always available. Here, we want this only to happen in the first minute or 10 minutes or one hour, as I mentioned. So you could either go through all of your game systems and have them each say, hey, if we're in the first 10 minutes, do this extra thing, but otherwise don't do the extra thing. But that becomes a bit of code that you have to put in a lot of different systems. So what we're going to see here is how to do in-game tutorials in a different way. We're going to have the core game logic know nothing about the tutorials. And then we'll have a tutorial entity sit off to the side and listen to what the core game is doing. And it is only going to be active for the first 10 minutes. And then if it goes away, the core game never knew about it and doesn't know about it anymore. So let's take a look at how that would work. Now, this talk and this demo scene is part of a larger course, which is the mini architecture for Unity course that you can get linked below. Now, that's a paid course where you get to see samples on how uh, this feature works, about the theory of software design. Here's an in-depth look. Looking at design patterns, looking at design principles, learning UML diagramming, covering different types of Unity architectures and why you might need them. The spoiler alert here is that you want them because they help you scale projects, create more maintainable code, and have more error-free workflows as you're building a project that scales. It includes lots of different stuff. One thing we've added here is 10 or more additional demos since the course was first created. And one of them is how to do a tutorial. And that's the one we're gonna look at now. So let's jump into Unity here. So if you get the uh, mini MVCS package free from Git, or as part of the course, you'll download and install that with the Git instructions. And then here in the samples tab, you'll import the examples. And that's what we're gonna be taking a look at here on the side. Now I've already done that. So when I go more, and then I open up the tutorial mini, we can see we've got some prefabs, we've got the scene, we've got a bit of code here that has the tutorial view and the tutorial controller. Let's go ahead and run this. Mm, yeah, I'm actually gonna show something before we step into this because notice the tutorial, well, I'll just make it nice and big. So the tutorial that is in the scene is in the box in the upper corner there. It says tutorial, enter username and password. So here for simplicity, I'm mimicking how a web experience would work. Often we're logging in to web experiences. You have a username and a password. That is the core real estate of the screen is the login mini example. Now that example sits in a different scene to just illustrate how separate this tutorial and the core game logic can be. I have the login mini as a separate scene. So that's a scene you can go and look at in depth and you can see how mini can be used to put a username, password, login button, logout button in there. So it's telling me here that the password is one, two, three, four. So if I go ahead here and I type in the name, I'm gonna type in my name like that. Then I'll start typing in the password. If I type in pass, notice as I start typing, the tutorial knows. 
So it first tells you, hey, go put in the username and the password. But the moment you've done the username and you start typing the password, it's like, oh, you might be ready to click login. So this is an arbitrary example about how the tutorial is looking into your progress through the core user experience and giving you some helpful hints. It could say, hey, here's a character you can interact with in the game. Click A to start dialogue. And after the user is familiar with that, you never want to show them the click A to start dialogue again, right? Same thing here. This is sitting off to the side, showing information. This could be uh, available perhaps only temporarily through the game. But the, the core idea here is that the, the game itself doesn't know about the tutorial, right? Then I click login, I get failed. It says you failed the tutorial, try again. So I'll log out and then I'll use the pass one, two, three, four, which is the, as the hint shows is the real answer. I'll hit login. It says you completed the tutorial. So see how nice that is that the tutorial sits off to the side and gives you helpful hints. It could certainly give you much more hints than what's shown here. Let's see how that structure works. So here we have the tutorial view which is the UI here with the, there we go, the title and the body. So it's just sitting up there in the corner, simple Unity UI. Then the mini here is going to take in a reference of that view, which we got right here. And let's take a look at how the mini is structured. So there's a comment here, I'll just read it. The example is the main entry point to the demo. A tutorial does not need to load a separate scene. That's done here only to demonstrate that this is a completely unrelated code that can properly decorate a user experience on top of a system without knowing. So we could have everything be in this scene, but I'm showing like, hey, if we load that login example, this can be so separate that it can be laid on top. And just that illustration of separation is nice, right? So here we'll take in the view. Now, most of the demo scenes that come, in fact, all of the demo scenes except this one, that come in with the mini are one scene demos. But here again, after I load up the mini, I go ahead and I load in that login with mini example, which is just the login portion. And it was created long before this demo and it knows nothing about the tutorial operating on top of it. It didn't even need to be updated for this. Then down here, what I do is make a bridge to the mini. And then um, I do the wiring up here. So what I do in the make a bridge is I go and get the model from the loaded scene. So you can look at the code above to see how that's done. But now that I know, okay, here's the model from the loaded scene, we as the tutorial need to listen into that. So I initialize the view using the context of the core logic. And then I create a, a tutorial controller here and I pass in the login model and the view. So here is the tutorial logic here. Let's go ahead and take a look in the controller and see how it works. So what I do is I update the tutorials little window to say the word tutorial, just to kick off uh, the clarity there. And then I start listening in to the login model. So remember, I load that extra scene. I grab the model from it because it was created using mini. So I'm able to grab the login model from it. And then I listen to a value called, can I log in? And then I listen to some different commands. So anytime the login, um, login button becomes enabled, can login is true. So I'm able to listen for that so that I can step through the process. Then anytime the log out command happens, Anytime the login submitted happens, and anytime the login completed happens. So there's four things that I've been able to listen to. Now, in theory, if you're developing the tutorial and the core logic at the same time, 
the step would be like this. Once you get the basic structure we have here, let's say that you had uh, introduced the idea of walking up to and talking to characters in an RPG game. You'd want your core login model here to expose an event like started conversation with character equals true, or here's a new command that says the start conversation command. Either of those, you'd want to have them as part of the core game logic and be updated and dispatched. Then the tutorial out here can hook into that, as we see here, either through the model or through the context command manager, and be able to listen to those things. So the usefulness here, down here, we see that anytime the log out happens in the core logic, I will update the tutorial text to be its first phrase of, okay, it's time to enter login, enter username and password. Anytime can login is changed, which because the core logic knows, should we be able to log in at this moment or not? The tutorial updates itself again and says a little bit more information. Anytime the user has submitted to log in, the tutorial will say waiting for the result. And anytime the login is finished, it listens in and says, well, if you were successful, then you're successful in the tutorial or if you were not successful, then you failed the tutorial. So it's an arbitrary demo here. This is kind of a silly example to give help for a form like this, but you can imagine in a game, there might be many different parts of the core logic that you would want to expose to the tutorial system. So two different teams in theory, just again to illustrate the separation, could work on the one could work on the core game logic and one could work on the tutorial logic as well as other systems but i'm just showing about the separation here and they're all speaking through the login model in the commands so that's it now let's take a look at the demo running again so again bulk of the screen real estate is is loaded from another scene it knows nothing that it's been loaded in the tutorial the tutorial sits on top and has just a little bit of view in the corner there and shows, well, it's the tutorial, enter the username and password. So I start typing in there and it updates. It says, okay, click login. Now I click login. It said waiting for result. And then it says, oh, you failed. Then I click log out. Notice the tutorial changes again. Now I can type some stuff in and then I'll type the correct answer here, One, two, three, four. Click login, it says waiting for a result, and then it says you completed the tutorial. So it's as tightly integrated as if it was part of the core logic, but you gain the benefit of that separation. So in the earlier part of this video, I mentioned one of the benefits of that tutorial uh, being separate is that maybe you only want it to run for the first one minute of gameplay. I could simply disable the tutorial up there in the corner and the core game logic doesn't need to know about the tutorial. It doesn't need to know if it's enabled or not. Or imagine that there's a settings menu and the settings has check this box if you want the tutorial, check this box if you don't want the tutorial. So that also could enable that little window in the corner here to be toggled on or toggled off. Great, so that's it for that demo.